but let's see exactly what these trainers are going to be bringing and how Eduardo is going to be able to play around that fish art by jumping right into this match. I'm excited again for this loser's bracket to see how that sort of scenario is going to affect these players and see who is going to be able to break out and stay in the competition. Eduardo's side though going for that Toka Kiss and Excadrill, uh, whereas Alessio has gone for the Cinderace and the Bishop, so leading with that really strong synergy call. Yeah, I mean, they pair up so, so nicely, and we can kind of see how they match up against Eduardo's side of the field. You know, you've got the Steel type on Bishop to try and deal with the Togekiss. You've got the Fire type moves from Cinderace uh, to deal with the Excadrill. Really kind of works out quite nicely in that regard. Of course, Cinderace does have the option to change its typing really, really quickly, and that could help. Mm -hmm. uh, in certain instances, you know, something like the Excadrill, an Earthquake would be great here against the Steel and a Fire type, but it honestly gives you know, that opportunity and that idea to Alessio to say, you know what, I'm going to become a different type. It can become a flying type. And then it's not going to get hit by the earthquake. It's going to be nice and safe and it's able to start dealing damage. And if it decides to go for a max move, go max airstream, it's getting speed boosts mm -hmm. as well, which honestly it doesn't need. It's that fast already, but it's just to make sure that your partner Pokemon's moving far, uh, first too. That's the really critical thing. You have to exactly calculate the speed tiers in each turn uh, because you don't want to be hitting Cinderace for a what was a super effective move for then a not very effective move as it has changed its typing because you moved after it in the turn. Um, so that's something that Eduardo really is going to have to calculate well and make sure that he isn't accidentally wasting um, a turn, whether it's Dynamax or not, by targeting into that Pokemon um, and not dealing as much damage as he potentially could. But Hey, this match is kicking off in explosive style. We've got both Dynamax Pokemon on the field, Cinderace for Yuri and Exdrial there for Eduardo. We did see the Cinderace um, jump up into its big form, first of all, as Togekiss just goes for a Protector, so wants to protect herself from any Steel-type moves, potentially from that Bishop, as Cinderace just goes straight for a Ooh. Max Flare, going right into that Exdrial, does a huge amount of damage, but I don't believe that picked up the KO. No, it doesn't look like it. He does get control of the weather with that harsh sunlight, but the Focus Sash, uh, mm. it looks like it's getting... Oh, it's not the Focus Sash. It's the weakness policy. My apologies. Doesn't Ooh. get the knockout uh, and pro <laughs> activates the weakness policy. This could get real nasty real quickly. Uh, a Steel Spike in return to the Bisharp. Uh, so a really high damage turn to kick things off. The defense boost are going to be really, really helpful here, uh, particularly for that Togekiss, but the Excadrill uh, manages to cling on through the Iron Head because of the defense boost. This Excadrill pulling its weight so hard in turn number one here in the loser's bracket. Ooh. Yeah, almost like it has that invisible focus sash that you mentioned <laughs> there, Adam, as well. Able to hang on by what must be a slither of HP. And this is exactly what we were talking about by predicting the speed tiers of this turn. By getting the defense boost up before that iron head connected, allowed the extra drill to hang on. Togekiss, however, did protect that turn and wasn't a target. So missed opportunity there for Eduardo. But this turn, going for that follow me. So just wants to try its Ooh. best to keep that extra drill on the field for one more turn. Cinderace going for a max flare, this time in the sun, it's gonna be dealing even more damage and doesn't quite pick up a KO against that Togekiss, but certainly puts it in range uh, if it's followed up by that Bishop to get the KO. Exegil though going for another max steel spike, boosting up the defense even further um, into the opposing Cinderace, even though it's not very effective, thanks to the weakness policy boost, that does a huge chunk of damage. Um, and these defense boosts, although they're great, both the Pokemon on Eduardo's side are such low health, and Iron Head being super effective means Togekiss is not able to hang on and will be KO. But this does give Eduardo the opportunity to bring in another Pokemon. Yeah, maybe something that can help out with the speed. I mean, this extra drill, if it gets caught by another Max Flare, is going to struggle. But now he may be able to fight back. That Rotom obviously able to do mm -hmm. great damage to the Cinderace if it keeps on Max Flaring. That extra drill, though, doing so much. I was so certain it was a knockout. Didn't quite see that sliver left on the bar being able to steal spike, <laughs> take the Iron Head. Uh, basically means that both trainers are going to get a full three turns of time to use yes. their Dynamax. And it's really gonna be interesting to see where we end up at the end of this turn, right? You know, there is a Pokemon down on Eduardo's side of the field. That's not great, but his Pokemon are a little bit healthier in the way that he's got a full-on Rotom there right now. 
Yeah, and going for the max strike here, um, not actually the most commonly seen max move, um, but it is going to lower the speed on Eduardo's side of the field. I uh, mean, of course, Alessio is going to be speedier going into this next turn, and that might help out the Bishop as well going forward. Rotom, though, having joined the field, is going to be able to munch on its berry. Again, only just managing to hang on. Um, the Citrus Berry gaining a tiny slither of health Ooh. there. Assurance coming out, but going into the max guard. So again, extra going to hang on for this next turn. Rotom going for the Thunderbolt, though, going to pick up the KO against that Bishop. So it looks like it's a three versus three Pokemon now. Yeah, and I, I like that play. I think Alessio is showing off one of those cool tricks that this team has with Max Strike. Lowering the speeds helps Bishop follow up before your opponent has a chance to move with Assurance, which obviously does more damage if, uh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. there's already been things going on in that turn. But right now, you know, the Cinderace, yeah, it's normal type. I don't think that's super relevant right now, but it's still going to be in a good position mm -hmm. to try and deal some damage. I like the Dust Pop selection here. I think that could help out towards the end of the game, and there's really nothing on Eduardo's side of the field that immediately threatens it or immediately makes you think, oh yeah, he can deal with this Dust Clops. That Dust Clops could quite simply set up a Trick Room uh, and help out Yuri's fourth Pokemon and kind mm -hmm. of set up these two modes where he led with the fast option with Cinderace, switched it up in the middle of the game uh, and kept going. Uh, Eduardo forced to switch out the Excadrill, doesn't feel good about Ooh. it being on the field with such low health. Yeah, and I like the switch that he's done, actually, bringing that Snorlax into a potential trick room, as we have actually seen Alessio lock that in. Um, so making sure that Pokemon is on the field for that environment is kind of a good strategy there for Eduardo, as the Cinderace goes for Bounce. Again, I love this play by Alessio. The Bounce means that um, the Cinderace in this next turn, now the trick room is in effect, is going to be protected for the turn. It's going to be moving last, but you can't hit it until it's back on the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's really nice play, and it's something that uh, a lot of trainers don't think about when they're using bounce, is how much invulnerability can you get? Like, if it bounced, there was no trick room, it would come back down and then be liable to be hit. Well, now it's it's mm. completely safe, so, you know, Eduardo has to play around that, and your only target, really, is this is this dust box, which, yeah, if you're just wasting mm. turns attacking into it, uh, you're certainly not getting the damage where it needs to go, right? Exactly. Dustbox here, just going for a Nightshade. I'm um, going to pick up the KO against the Exodil that switched in. I feel like the Exodil was really just stacked up here by Eduardo. He wants to keep the Rotom around for another turn. As the Snorlax goes for a Yawn into that Dustbox, they're going to stop it from picking up some KOs against that Rotom potentially. You know, Nightshade is going to deal a big chunk of damage to it as Bounce connects onto that Snorlax. And thanks to the Life Orb, that actually does almost a third to the Snorlax, such a bulky Pokemon. Um, and that was something I was thinking about. Alessio needs a way to be able to take down the Snorlax. You know, Dustbox doesn't really have the capability to do it so for the current state of play Cinderace needs to be able to start whittling away at that Snorlax before it's able to regain some health and cause problems. Yeah and we've seen in move selection Cinderace certainly has some options uh, but he does have to be mm -hmm. careful in exactly how he uses those doesn't want to oh, yeah. uh, end up looking foolish by uh, taking a lot of damage <laughs> on his own. Uh, I think the interesting thing and we can obviously see it and I don't know if uh, Edu's kind of thought about this is yeah the pre-marina in the back and now he's preserved that Rotom. And I think that's something he was very aware of when preserving mm -hmm. that Rotom by switching into the uh, Extra Drill. I really liked to say, hey, Trick Room's up. Extra Drill's done so much this game. Thank you so much, Extra Drill, but uh, not mm -hmm. anymore. That said, Rotom showing one of the issues it has against Dusclops, a very low HP pool, uh, really not mm -hmm. able to, to stack that up too much. And it just gets knocked out by a Nightshade. Exactly, Dustbox, not an offensive Pokemon, but really putting in the work here and able to pick up those KOs so that the partner Pokemon can deal the bigger offensive pressures where needed um, and picks up the KO nicely against that Rotom. It does take a little bit of a nap, but I don't feel like it actually has a way to touch the supposed Snorlax. Maybe with um, Pain Split, it can just start regaining a little bit of health, but it's really going to come down to the Primarina. It's come in, it's healthy, um, and it can apply a bit of pressure to the Snorlax as well. Yeah, I mean, the Dusclops really not going to threaten the Snorlax at all. I think the Primarina's got so much to do. We do see the boosting move of choice on Edu's Snorlax here. Curse, uh, not the mm -hmm. most common. I think a lot more people have been going for Belly Drum, particularly in this tournament. But Curse helping out your attack a little bit there. That said, you know, if you're not putting the Primarina to sleep with Yawn, it's just going to be able to start dealing damage uh, with this Moonblast. Gets the drop special attack, not at all important, but nice to know that you can get those. Uh, and we do see those mm -hmm. leftovers coming through. Means we could be in for a bit of a slog at the end of this game, Lou. Yeah, it's always our side of my swear when we cast. There's always some kind of storm <laughs> going on here. But 
It looks like Sir Primarine, if it's able to keep dealing out some big damage, Ooh. but first of all, it has to actually survive this Z bomb coming out from the Snorlax. That was actually something we saw, I believe, in day one, um, where Snorlax gets that boost up. The defense boost um, from the curse, really not too relevant here, um, but getting that attack boost really puts it in a position to start threatening that Primarina strongly. Um, Primarina going for a Moonblast in return. Doesn't pick up the KO, and the Snorlax is able to keep going for these um, seed bombs and keep regaining its health a little bit more um, with the leftovers. If Cream Marine is not able to pick up the KO against the Snorlax, it's going to be KO'd in return by a seed bomb. Yeah, but it, also the trick room just ended, which means as Cream Marina gets to attack first, we see Yuri switch it oh. up to the Hydro Cannon. It does miss. Dusclops wakes up though, gets the Will O Wisp down, and I think that's the perfect time to wake up. I think uh, probably a moment of panic there that Alessio is able to kind of uh, work through as we see this seed bomb uh, landing after the will o -Wisp. is enough to get the knockout though. That's uh, a oh. critical hit helping out there. Oh my goodness, everything just went wild in that turn. Green Marina unable to connect the Hydra Cannon that would have done so much damage against that Snorlax, I believe picking up a nice KO there. Um, Dustlob's going, oh, you missed, but hey, I've woken up, let's will o -Wisp. let's help you survive the seed bomb. But Snorlax going, huh, no, I'm gonna crit through that. Um, and now Dustlop's in this awkward position where I feel like it cannot touch this Dustlop's at all. Will-O-Wisp really was its only option, and that's counteracted um, by the leftovers. Yeah, I mean, the Will-O-Wisp is the only way to, uh, you know, get some damage down on it. And as you say, the leftovers just heals that up perfectly. Uh, so really uh, not going to be the best for Dustlop's. Interesting, though, we get to see, you know, how much seed bombs do against the Dustlop's. Uh, maybe uh, Eduardo's going to give us some information on his... Uh, on his Snorlax set, or maybe we're just going to kind of call it quits early on uh, instead of forcing us through a number of tough turns. So I guess thank you, Alessio, for uh, not putting... Let's see if Yuri can fight Barak or if Edu can wrap this one up and keep himself going in the tournament. Well, it's going to be a fast lead out here for Eduardo with the Dragon Pole and the Excadrill, whereas Yuri has opted again for that Cinderace and Bishop combination. And I, I can't disagree with that. I think they work really well together, and potentially with the information you learned from game one and calling um, the speed tiers and who moves first in this turn, it could be a different game. But Dragon Pole throws an interesting mechanic into the mix, being super speedy. Yeah, Dragon Pole definitely changes things up a little bit here. Uh, both trainers saying, hey, I'm going to carve out an early lead. I'm going to put you on the back foot and uh, I'm going to try and get you uh, early on and force those wins. Be interesting to see exactly uh, what Yuri uh, does with the Bishop here. I think the Bishop has plenty of options uh, to try and cause some chaos. We talk about dark type moves against Dragapult and uh, Bishop has no shortage of those. It's certainly got options <laughs> and maybe, you know, there's going to be a world where the Cinderace can help out that Bishop. We saw the Max Strike with the speed drop. You know, obviously you can't target the Dragapult with Max Strike, but, you know, if you really needed to, if you needed to get a little bit of damage down, maybe that's the way to go. Uh, we'll see exactly how these trainers decide to go with these very offensive leads as it looks like we're going back to the double Dynamax on turn one, Lou. Yeah, I think choosing the Dynamax for Eduardo is going to be critical here. We saw Exegil do so well in game one, but Dynamaxing up that Dragapult plays a whole different mechanic. Bishop going for the Sucker Punch means Dragapult is able to survive Ooh. this turn. If it hadn't Dynamax, it would have been KO'd. And Dragapult's able to go here for a big mass airstream, um, tugging down oh. into Alessio Cinderace. Doesn't actually um, pick up the KO here, but gets the speed up. No Dynamax though from Alessio in this situation, yeah. um, which is very, very interesting as Extra Drill goes for the Earthquake. So picks up the KO against Cinderace, brings the Bishop down to 13 HP. Um, really sort of putting Alessio here on the back foot, but it does enable him um, to go for this Trick Room mode. And I actually really like that play there by Alessio. There wasn't really anything he could do to stop Earthquake and a Max move from the Dragapult. So I actually love the way he didn't Dynamax and decided to go, you know what? The sort of turn zero, not my best situation. Let's move into the next turn and try and getting an advantage. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was I was expecting him to Dynamax it and try and retaliate with, you know, playing around that Libero ability with the Cinderace, but not doing that, uh, kind of giving up the Cinderace, not usually the most common idea is say, hey, you know what, just knock it out, <laughs> let's move on, uh, and we'll go from there. That said, you know, Max guarding, definitely trying to avoid a Sucker Punch, certainly trying to help there, um, but it looks like Yuri is so confident in his last two Pokemon in Dusclops, and as we know from a little bit of a sneak preview on our side, Primavina, you know, it mm. looks like he's just going to want to play with those for the rest of the game. So uh, admitting that his lead wasn't the way to go. No Dynamax from either of those. 
And uh, yeah, he's down to two Pokemon after two turns. And uh, Edu's still got four, so so much riding on this pre Marina. And of course, it's partner in Dusclops. Yeah, I mean, the irony is there's a sort of 4 2 Pokemon advantage here, but Yuri looks so in control. Having the fish up there, applying the pressure with the sucker punch to the Dragon Pulp meant that Dusclops was able to get up a really free trick room. And now that he's got the pre Marina, a Pokemon that can deal out super effective damage against both Pokemon. Um, on the opposing side of the field and also Ooh. against this Arcanine that switched in if he's maybe gone for um, a Max Geyser into that slot really does show that he's he's got the advantage to his side in the trick room environment if he can call the right targets and select the right moves then Yuri is going to be able to absolutely sweep through Eduardo's team and preserving the Dynamax for this pre Marina I think has definitely been the optimal decision in this game. Uh, spoiler alert, this turn is definitely going in Yuri's favor. We saw exactly <laughs> what moves he selected. Uh, I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but he's called this switch so, so well. And being able to will with the extra as well keeps it completely uh, in a, a very negative position, right? It's not got those boosts from Dynamaxing like it did in game one. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly going to struggle. He also forced out and forced away that Dragapult before it's Dynamax ended, which means he probably is on the upper foot. The Arcanine comes cool. in. Gets caught by a Max Geyser, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that's not the preferred switch in uh, when you are someone like Edu. Uh, you want to keep up the momentum, but his momentum from those early knockouts is just completely negated now. Yeah, particularly when you've got rid of the Bishop, it's almost like the safe time for Arcanine to come in, right? But not when there's a Max Geyser coming right into that slot. But beautiful play there by Yuri. He keeps the extra in check by going for that Will-O-Wisp um, and going for the Max Geyser. We know Max Starfall is more optimal when you're sort of facing down against a Dragapult, but due to the reduced health um, that it had, going for that Max Geyser could potentially have picked up the KO anyway. Um, and I think predicting the Arcanine coming in here that Eduardo might want to preserve the Dragapult for once Trick Room is over, really was a great call. He's now got a Rotom to face down though, and that's a Pokemon that can provide a little bit of difficulty for Pre Marina. Yeah, obviously, the, you know, the Thunderbolts could be problematic, uh, get that damage down, but it's certainly not the best kind of offensive threat. There's certainly options you'd rather have. And I think something like that Snorlax with the Seed Bomb would be preferred here, right? You know, we saw how much mm. the Seed Bomb did, uh, would certainly help out. Uh, it looks like you know, the extra is really not that scary, and the fact it had to take a turn to Swords Dance instead of fire back with any kind of attack certainly helps Yuri keep the momentum. Uh, the Rotom, though, trying to help burn down some of those uh, Dynamax turns for this pre Marina, uh, along with the Excadrill. So Edu saying, wow, that turn didn't go well. Uh, let's only give you one more turn of your <laughs> Dynamax pre Marina to, to hurt me with. Yeah, really trying to work through um, these Trick Room turns as pre Marina goes for a Max Geyser. Um, going into that Rotom in the rain only does a slither of damages, it's not very effective and of course Protect really negating the impact there. But every little bit of chip can make the difference and nothing has changed in the sense that Pre Marina is still in such an offensive position and the fact that Dusclops can help out by chipping away 50 HP potentially from that Rotom as well um, just puts Alessio in such a strong position. Yeah, and I mean, you're really asking questions if you're in uh, Yuri's shoes here. Uh, you're saying, hey, I mean, you can't bring in your Dragapult because there's a chance that I'm just going to max Starfall you on the way in. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not too worried about your Excadrill because it's burned, but you did Swords Dance, so uh, I'll get you back for that. And we do see Dustbox Nightshading saying, hey, I know your Rotom actually doesn't have that much health, and I'm going to capitalize off that by doing a fixed number of health every single turn. Yeah, and doubling up into that Rotom is enough to get the KO, and it also sets up the Mystery Terrain. Um, I quite like this in the sense you can't get any more status afflictions if that Rotom was maybe able to get a Paralysis um, with something, um, like, but unfortunately it's been KO'd, so that's not going to happen at all. Iron Head coming out from the extra though, doing a little bit of chip to that Dusclops, um, but the burn really putting in the work here and negating the physical offensive output that that extra drill has. It also means Eduardo is now forced to bring that Dragapult back into play and it, it's still not in a favorable position. This pre Marina, I believe, is still at full HP as well. Um, going for something like a Hyper Voice in the rain is just going to be able to pick up the KO here. Yeah, I mean, that's a really easy way to start tidying up the game, right? Nightshades and Hyper Voices, throwing those down, uh, just keeping that damage output. Uh, consistent and this pairing, Dusclops Pre Marina. You know, we always talk about Dusclops and Snorlax, Dusclops and, and Hatterene, maybe. Maybe mm. Dusclops Pre Marina is the, the new thing that everyone has to worry about and, <laughs> and see what they can do. 
Yeah, there's always iconic trick room pairs, right? And this could potentially be another one that Yuri is carving out. Dragapult going for the tech, Exegel trying, oh, goes for the tech as well. Um, so again, just trying to play defensively as this trick room does like to sort of tinkle out here. Um, of course, no more Dynamax, so there's no more breaking through these protects, but it still does ask the question, what can Eduardo do to pick up the KO here? Um, Exodrill isn't dealing out a lot of offensive pressure and the Dragapult is going to be limited to what moves it can select and I don't feel like the Dragapult is going to be able to pick up anything near a one-hit KO. Yeah, and I think what's interesting here is, you know, there's easy trick room to go back up, right? Edu just kind of burned both his mm -hmm. protects in that turn, so he's got to take damage at some point this turn and his options are, are, are so hard. Do I go after this Dust Pops and stop him trick rooming and, and stop him confirming that win in the next turn? Or do I go after this pre-marina and hope I can deal enough damage to knock it out? Looks like the Dust Pops is going to be the target here. Um, but, you know, with Phantom Force, there's no damage coming through this turn. Trick Room's going to go back up and this pre-marina's got to be feeling pretty good about itself. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even if the Dust Pops does um, flinch due to the Iron Head and doesn't get Trick Room up, um, the thing is the mm -hmm. Phantom Force isn't going to be able to pick up the KO against that Pre-Marina and it's going to be able to retaliate with a Hyper Force. Even after the rain, I feel like that will be a nice KO against that Dragapult. So it does turn out that there was a flinch, so at least you stop the Trick Room going up again. Um, but I feel like it's not a way to close out the match and Yuri is going to be able to take this two a game three. Yeah, I mean, Yuri's forced us into game three, the loser's bracket. Those high-intensity, mm -hmm. high-stakes matches carry on. The Dust Pops does fall. Uh, that little bit of life over recall there on the Dragapult. Doesn't really matter. Primarina's got Moonblast and is going to force us uh, to game three in this set. Everything to play for in what is essentially a well-informed best of one right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The winner of this next game, the game three, will be able to remain in the competition and the loser is knocked out. Game number three. I think game number three is going to be so back and forth. Both players know mm -hmm. all the tricks and secrets on their opponent's team. Uh, of course, they did get to see a little bit beforehand, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, with seeing each other's team lists. But now you see exactly how they execute those. So I think this game has got uh, obviously all to play for, uh, but so much information should give us a really explosive match. Yeah, if I was Eduardo, I'd probably want to make sure that Snorlax is in the back because it did so well for him in Game 1 and I feel like he missed it in Game 2. He really needed it to counter out that Primarina. The leads though, Yuri going for what he knows and Cinderace and Bishop are on the field, facing down against Togekiss and Excadrill. So, again, leads we've seen often from Yuri, but he looks like he's in a safer position to go for that Dynamax this turn. Ah, uh, good old Togekiss Excadrill. We've seen that one a few times. Nah. Uh, certainly <laughs> yes. a potent pairing and uh, as we've mentioned, you know, you can freely Earthquake next to this Togekiss, and you're going to get super effective damage down on a Cinderace and on the Bishop. I think that this might be one of those turns where Yuri decides to try and play around that uh, with certain types of moves, getting away from that, changing mm -hmm. his typing, uh, and leaving the Bishop, I guess, on its own. Uh, but if he can plan around that, follow up, maybe do a little bit better than the way it kind of played out in game number one, carve out a bigger advantage. You know, he doesn't need to throw away his lead this time. I think he's feeling a lot more comfortable about it against this pairing. Yeah, again, it's thinking through those turns. If you're going for a max air screen with the Libra ability, turning yourself into a flying type, you're going to be able to avoid those earthquakes. And it may not be as fortunate for the Bishop, but Bishop can apply a lot of offensive pressure on his own. If you're Alessio, though, you want to try and get rid of that Togekiss. You just want rid of any kind of redirectional support action so that you're free to target down the partner Pokemon later on. And we've seen how much damage that Yuri can do to this Excadrill when it's in its Dynamax form. Not necessarily enough to pick up the KO, but this time he's going to have to deal with the Dynamax Togekiss. Um, again, this Pokemon, there's really no end to its versatility. It can be supportive, it can be offensive, it can be Dynamax. And that's the mode that Eduardo has gone for in this situation. Um, Excadrill just going for a protect Ooh. though no free earthquakes coming out from here maybe knowing um that the max airstream was coming out we'd have to work around that later on um turning itself into a flying type the cinderace is going to connect onto that opposing togekiss doing about a third of damage here yeah i mean getting damage down on a, a dynamax togekiss is important uh, every little helps when you're trying to wear it down cinderace is going to take a little bit uh, and the follow-up Iron Head from Bishop, a lot of damage, but because of the Dynamax, Togekiss is still there. That means it's able to match the speed boost from Max Airstream with a Max Airstream of its own, keep some parity in that between both sides of the field, and leave us in a very interesting position coming into the following turn. 
yeah, it's interesting as well. The Togekiss was kind of forced to go for a max airstream in this situation so that it can match the max airstream of Cinderace's side and keep the speed um, on sort of a level playing field. But because there's an um, airstream apiece, the Cinderace is still going to be faster and be able to pick up a KO against that Togekiss. I think it's interesting as well, Eduardo has Dynamaxed a different Pokemon in every single game, just showing the versatility of his team and potentially was trying to catch out Yuri by going for the Togekiss in this situation. But again, Yuri able to apply the right offensive pressure, puts himself in a position where he can easily pick up the KO in this next turn. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I like the, the way that this is being played out. I think that, you know, both trainers exchanging kind of speed boosts is, is very, very wise. And I think this switch in is very, very smart from Edu saying, hey, I know about Max Strike. I know it's there. So I'm going <laughs> to either I'm going to Max Guard and give you an option where you can't hit me either. Exactly. Going into the Max Guard there, meaning that that turn um, from the Cinderace is oh. null and void. But the Assurance following up into that Dragapult does a huge amount of damage. It is able to hang on, but it's not going to be on the field for too much longer. Yeah, I mean, usually people try and follow up an attack with Assurance to get the double damage, but uh, Dragapult, yes, very fast. Yes, does a lot of damage. Mm. Not that bulky, and now pretty much can't attack while Bishop's on the field. If it does, Sucker Punch is going to be able to deal with it. So, you know, he has to play around that. And this Togekiss, you know, can't do too much, I think, uh, to, to try and deal with that. So we'll see if Yuri can capitalize on this good position. Another oh. Max Guard. So this Togekiss just Max Airstreeping once in all three of its Dynamax turns. Yeah, it goes for the double Max Guard here, really stalling out in terms of the Cinderace's um, Dynamax as well. Uh, but that still doesn't really help him too much on the speed advantage here. The Dragapult, although speedy, like we've said, there's so many things that Bisharp can do to KO it. But even if the Dragapult is able to get one move off, thanks to the Life Orb, it's going to be KO'd after that one turn. So it does not have the longevity here to help Eduardo out. Um, Togekiss could, of course, go for some redirection in this situation. But like I said, Dragapult's not going to hang around. Yeah, Dragapult can't attack. That's that's simple. It attacks. <laughs> I mean, even if it lands an attack when Bisharp's gone, the Life Orb will get it. Uh, we see uh, Alessio just forcing him to to make that switch, right? And now the Tokyo mm -hmm. isn't Dynamax, there's going to be a number of ways to knock it out. Uh, this is an interesting play to try and keep the Dragapult around. Uh, Bishop Sucker Punch being pulled that way but failing. Uh, Cinderace will be able to get the knockout anyway. But this Dragapult can only really target down one of these Pokemon. Uh, and that's going to be an issue. Dragon Darts might help a little bit. Uh, but we'll see exactly uh, what it can get out of this, I guess, one remaining turn. <laughs> yeah, Pyroball picking up the KO against that Togekiss. And like I said, Dragon Dance is the good choice here. You can get some decent damage on, across onto these Pokemon, a little bit of chip, and break the Focus Sash on that Bishop as well. And actually, it does pay off by getting the KO on the Cinderace. But as we saw in Game 2, KOing the Cinderace is not necessarily a good thing, as it gives Alessio the opportunity to switch in a Pokemon from the back. Potentially and most likely that trick room mode you can see the Pokemon there, a little sneak peek. Um, and it now allows him to go into sort of the second mode of this battle. Like phase one is over, now it's time for phase two. The thing is though, Togekiss is down. If there is Snorlax in the back, it's a perfect opportunity for Eduardo to bring it in. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see exactly what Eduardo has. And I guess, you know, Yuri can make that game plan. There's no Snorlax, it's going to be the Rotom oh. uh, paired up with that Excadrill. So, Kind of obvious what he has to deal with first, right? Deal with the Rotom <laughs> so the Pre Marina is nice and safe. Of course, the Pre Marina can't Dynamax, so we're going to have a different end game to what we had last time. Uh, but, you know, this Bishop still on the field. Bishop still deals a lot of damage. Uh, even Assurancing without the boost, it's getting the damage down. Yeah, and I like going for the Assurance there. Sucker Punch was too risky when you consider things like Swords Dance and Nasty Plot there, which is exactly what Rotom has gone for. It seemed like there wasn't really anything that Eduardo could do to stop the Trick Room. So again, if you're Eduardo, you need to capitalize on that. Let's go for Setup. Let's click Swords Dance. Let's put Nasty Plot so that when Pre Marina comes in, I'm going to be able to have the best opportunity to try and pick up a KO. But now the Trick Room's up, there's no more Dynamax potential here. Duskbox can go for those Nightshades, take away 50 HP from these Pokemon. And if the Bishop goes for a Sucker Punch, that's also going to hit very hard. Yeah, I mean, the Bishop Sucker Punch is going to be very, very damaging uh, on both these Pokemon. Just making sure you break Focus Sash on Excadrill, I think, is important here. Uh, making mm. sure you kind of keep the Rotom in check. Very, very wise as well. But the Rotom protects, so Ooh. this turn could be really big uh, for Alessio. Uh, putting down that pressure. The Bishop Sucker Punch going in the right direction. Uh, look at that damage. That's insane. Nearly Followed gone. up by Nightshade. Oh. Yeah, like that's big damage going down onto the extra. 
Dicks to protect on the Rotom, but either way, I think you were right. You need to get rid of that focus action. It just makes things so much easier for Primarina in the back. Um, and considering both of the Pokemon on Alessio's side are still here in action, um, they're going to be able to keep whittling away at these Pokemon so that when Primarina comes in, it literally just has to click Hyper Voice and try and win out this match. Yeah, I mean, it needs to come in before the trick remains, which right now, you know, it's not going to if, if there's no knockouts coming from Eduardo's Rotom and Excadrill. That said, I mean, these sucker punches are going to start to really hurt. This is mm -hmm. one of the mind games that you have to play against Bishop. Not only do you have to worry about, are you going to give it boost and intimidate? You have to worry about, are you going to let it sucker punch you freely? That Rotom takes a whole lot of damage, enough to activate its berry and maybe keep it around for one more turn. But, you know, there's only so much you can do when this Bishop is just sucker punching you over and over again. Exactly. You know, getting rid of these items as well, Premier in the back, is going to be really helpful. And with Bishop going down with a critical hit, so Rotom, you know, really trying to pack a punch here, um, means that Premier is going to be able to join the battle at the end of this turn. Extra going for the Iron Head does do a good chunk of damage to that Dusclops thanks to the Sword Stance boost. Um, but we know that Dusclops as well is packing that Will O Wisp. That's something that Dusclops can go for um, in this next turn. Um, or, to be honest, looking at the stat or the extra drill, you might just want to go for that Nightshade and pick up the KO. But either way, Alessio has all the options that he needs in order to close out this game three. Yeah, this Dusclops has been doing great damage with the with the Nightshade, quite honestly. You know, usually you just see it there for <laughs> a little bit of kind of chip and assistance. Uh, but, you know, he's been doing very, very well, knowing about these like, low health point numbers, being able to, to keep on going. The Nightshade going towards the Protecting Rotom, the Hyper Voice going at both of them, which are protecting. That said, there's more Trick Room to come. Uh, it's not quite done. And, uh, you know, the Primarina's still in a great position to wrap up this game. Ooh, I just saw uh, Yuri log in something very, very interesting here. Rotom going for the Protect as will Exodil trying to go for that double as Dusclops goes for the pain split here. So just wants to mm -hmm. regain itself up a little bit of health so it can put itself in a strong position in the next turn. But Primarina going for that Hyper Voice. It is enough to pick up the KO. Yuri just going for a little bit of styling, kind of guaranteeing and locking in that victory for himself. He's going to stay in the competition. Unfortunately, Eduardo will be knocked out from the Invitational. Ooh. But what an amazing best of three set there. There was so much going on.